I'm Bill Pasmore, Senior Vice President at the Center for Creative Leadership. CCL's mission is to advance the understanding, practice, and development of leadership for the benefit of society worldwide. With that in mind, we've developed this series on leadership, where I have the privilege of meeting with people who have distinguished themselves as outstanding leaders. We hope these interviews provide an opportunity to learn from these remarkable leaders about the challenges they faced, the accomplishments they've celebrated, and the factors that they believe have most contributed to their success. Good morning. Morning. We're here with John Garrison, CEO of Terex. Uh, and he's agreed to be part of our On Leadership series here at the Center for Creative Leadership. Thanks so much, John, for taking the time to share a little bit of your leadership journey and experiences with us. It's great to be with you. I think leadership's incredibly important, so if I can help out in any way, more than happy to do it. Great, thank you. First of all, I would say to, to be successful or to be a leader, you've got to have a, a high learning motor. You have to be willing to always learn and to grow. And on-the-job experience is incredibly important, but also to learn this, this concept of leadership. And I was fortunate mm -hmm. uh, in my business career. Uh, early on, I had a leadership coach, um, and that, that helped me to understand a little bit more about myself and to use tools like you know 360 feedback and peer feedback. And then I was very fortunate to, to uh, later on in my career, uh, to go to leadership at the peak mm -hmm. uh, with, at CCL, a, a very profound moving experience. And I think the thing you learn there is to be a successful leader, you have to learn about yourself. You have to understand your tendencies. You have to know a little bit about yourself because if you don't know a little bit about yourself, it's hard for people to want to follow you. Yeah. And so one of the things that, you know, that we learned at, you know, at, the, at CCL Leadership at the Peak is a lot about ourselves. Um, and that self-knowledge helps as a leader. Can you recall something you walked away uh, from that week with that was enlightening or surprising about you as a leader that has stayed with you? Um, you know, the, the first thing, you know, you know it, was, it was somewhat similar to, to actually what West Point tried to teach and what CCL tried to teach was the concept of trying to find some balance in a hyper-competitive, hyper-active world, trying to find an element of balance. So, you know, intellectual balance, um, you, know, you know, understanding yourself, sure. some spiritual balance. So mm -hmm. I walked away thinking, yes, that, that helps in a crazy, chaotic world that sense of balance, and at CCL really stressed that. You know, physical, intellectual, mental, spiritual balance is what you need in a, in a you know, t to be successful and deal with the many pressures and challenges that you have as a leader. Well, you as you go higher up in an organization, the number of constituents that you have to deal with um, grows pretty mm -hmm. exponentially. And so there's a lot of constituents that you need to understand all their requirements and, and their needs the higher up you go in, uh, in an organization. So that was the first thing, especially in a publicly traded company, obviously you have your customers, your shareholders, your team members, and they all have in some ways competing interests. And so as a leader, you have to assess that situation and you have to figure out what's best for the overall organization, both near term. And as a leader, you've got to, you've got to establish that where you're going, what are you doing and why you're doing it. And, and that, that, that's a little bit more challenging the higher up you go uh, in an organization. The other thing you learn is that you know, communications are incredibly important. And the higher up you go, the more diffuse the communications are. And so I use the word ruthless consistency <laughs> in our communication and our messaging I and like our that. strategy. Because you know, I, I have to say it a thousand times, and I may get bored with saying it a thousand times, but the team member, that may be the first time they heard it. Exactly. And so those are some of the things that you learn um, as you go up in an organization, and you have to be much more dependent on other people, mm -hmm. other leaders, uh, the higher up you go. Yeah, you can't do it all yourself. No, it's, uh, it's a 24-7 job as it is, but you cannot, you have to learn how to delegate and trust other leaders and create a culture that, that enables you to trust uh, other leaders to execute the, 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 the mission of what you're trying to accomplish. Well, I think like. you, you build trust over time mm -hmm. and, and by activity, action, and results. Uh, you, we, you know, we're in a business world, so ultimately you've got you've to deliver results to, to build that trust. And so we kind of think in terms of people, which I think is the most important, people, process, and tools. Mm -hmm. And so you build up the skills of people, build capability, uh, as a leader, you have to come in. I've been in very difficult situations, and sometimes one of the things you have to do as a leader is assess your talent and make the mm -hmm. changes. I kind of think about 
aptitude and attitude. And if you've got aptitude and attitude, we can build capability. If either one of those two things are lacking, we're probably going to have to make a change. And so I think you, you work with your, your talent, you're straightforward, you're open and honest, um, provide direct feedback, um, and then coach. You know, this is the thing, you know, that, you know as leaders, coach, which, and, and if you think about great coaches, they point out what's wrong, but they also spend a lot of time pointing out what's right. Sure. So if you spend, a, you know, it's kind of the four to one. I, I recall back uh, back at uh, yes, leadership right. at the peak is that human beings, if you don't praise four times more than you criticize, they're going to think you're criticizing more often. I will tell you that I fail miserably at that, <laughs> <laughs> but it is something that, as a leader, that you think through on, on the coaching side. I've I've uh, I've been fortunate, lucky, if you will. I, I do believe where luck is where opportunity meets preparation. Uh, but I have been fortunate, and many of the circumstances that I've had to deal with are organizations that aren't necessarily performing a at their potential. Um, and so I've been asked to go in and, and to see if I could help the organization achieve and, and reach its its potential. So that's kind of what I like to do. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the first thing that you learn is is kind of stop, look, and listen. Um, don't go in with a preconceived notion of what the answer is. Mm -hmm. um, so stop, look, and listen. You know, interview the constituents. When I started in this job, I, I went around to the top uh, 75 leaders in the com company, and I, I had you know I had a couple questions. What are the three things you want me to change? What are the three things you don't want me to change? What's the one thing you think I need to know? And what question didn't I ask you that I should? And I did that, you know, in the organization with the leaders. I did that externally with shareholders. I did that with the board members. So you get a mosaic of what are some of the issues that you're going to need to address as an organization. So I've used that same model all the way up through, and it, and it works. It gets more complicated the higher up you go, but that model works. And that then enabled us to develop a plan, a cohesive plan that people buy into. You said you wanted me to change this. Mm -hmm. Part of our plan is to change this, whatever that is. And you begin the, the buy-in, the engagement to the plan. And so setting a very clear path, um, you know, very clear strategy, um, keep it simple. Here it's focus, simplify, and execute to win. And ruthlessly, consistently talk about that strategy every opportunity you have as a leader. And that's what it takes to get the buy-in and, and to, you know, to change the culture from a okay performing organization to a high performance organization. And the other thing I've learned, it takes time. You know, mm -hmm. somebody tells me they can change the culture in a year, I'm saying, yeah, you've never done it. It <laughs> takes a lot longer than that. It does take time. You know, it's, you, you, you try to do some self-reflection and, and try to help understand what's you know whatever the definition of success is and I think that is important people need to help you know don't don't use somebody else's definition of success but understand what what success is but I think what, some of the things that have helped me to be successful throughout time and, and to grow and to learn is I am passionate uh, you know that I and and I'm passionate about what I'm do I'm passionate about people I'm passionate about leadership and so People feed off of that passion, and it has to manifest itself in your in your in your own way. So, the next thing I think to be to be successful as a leader is you got to have passion because it's hard work. But if you're passionate about it, it doesn't feel like work. You know, the next thing is being authentic. Um, organizations can quickly see through you if if you're not authentic. Now, clearly, we have to grow, we have to learn, but you have to be yourself. And if you try to be somebody you're not, the collective wisdom of the organization. Is far greater than the wisdom of the couple people running the organization. They'll see. They'll see through that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, that you know, we talked about that strong value base. Right. Let people know where you stand from a value-based standpoint, and 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 act within those values. And then the final thing is that, you know, if you if you go back to you know, Collins, good to great, you know, to be successful as a leader, I think there's got to be a degree of humility. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, you, and you have to have enough self-confidence to be, to be willing to make difficult decisions, but there also, also has to be an incredible degree of humility because it, this is difficult and things won't always work out the way y you would like them. So, so having a sense of a humbleness and humility and realizing that leadership is a privilege, servant leadership, it's not about you as the leader, it's about the organization that you have the privilege to lead. I think those are some things that, that I've learned throughout time, and every time I get in a difficult situation, I, I try to re, you know, relearn or reinforce or, or utilize those basic principles. John, I want to thank you for spending some time with us and sharing some of your insights about leadership. 
with uh, all the people there who would aspire to be the leader that you are today. Thank you very much. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully it helped. It will indeed. Great.